Hey leaders, it's Erin here, and I am so excited you're tuning into another episode of the Failed It podcast. To kick it off, I wanted to share a review from Powers MJ. Powers MJ writes, I walk away from every episode with a new idea or strategy for myself and for my business. Thank you for putting together such meaningful episodes. Well, friend, you are welcome. And if you're like Powers MJ and you love the show, please leave us a review on iTunes. I read every single one, and it is so crucial in having future Failed It podcast listeners find us. What a tongue twister. So I am so happy to put today's episode out into the universe. One caveat here is that the episode was recorded prior to the tragic death of George Floyd. Now, I know Brad Chandler, my guest, is a huge advocate of the Black Lives Matter movement, as am I, so know that's why there is no mention in this episode. However, there is a lot of goods to unpack here about pivoting, inclusion, and mindfulness, so let's get into the episode. Hey there, my name is Erin Deal, and I'm a half Southern, half Midwestern mama, some call this voice a nasal twang, who took $5,000 to build and scale a one of a kind experiential organization that improves the lives of corporate professionals through personal development, humanity, and humor. Along the way, I've built client relationships with some of the most notable companies in the country, all while attracting a rock star team of experts and hilarious facilitators. Sounds pretty awesome, right? Well, what I didn't tell you is that my resume also includes a long list of comedy shows I bombed, improv teams I didn't make, companies who told me no, and many a heartache when it came to becoming a mother. I want to show you the real deal of the grit, creativity, and determination it takes to overcome your disappointments, embrace the suck, and design the career you could only dream about. I believe we all have our own unique gifts that we bring to the world, and it is our mistakes that help to unwrap them. Welcome to Failed It. Welcome to the Failed It podcast, the podcast that reminds you, you have to fail in order to improve. I'm Erin Deal, the founder of Improve It and your host. And today, I am so excited to have our guest, Brad Chandler, VP of Business and Strategy and Development at The Hollis Co. on our show. Here's a little about Brad. So Brad has decades of hands-on experience in trend-based businesses in the music industry, as an influencer marketer, as a brand manager, a product developer, an entrepreneur, and in business development. So his instincts are honed on developing sticky concepts that drive revenue. Now, currently, he strategizes both forward-thinking developments and internal business structures to effectively build the vision of his CEO at the Hollis Co., Miss Rachel Hollis. You heard that right. The Hollis Company produces business conferences, women's conferences, athletic runs, full featured media projects, lifestyle media, digital education courses, and is moving fiercely into the health and wellness space in 2020 and 2021. So first of all, let me tell you a little story of how Brad and I met. You guys, you are here for the first impression, Rose. It's happening as we speak. I found Brad on LinkedIn as I am a huge fan of the Hollis Co. I love Rachel Hollis, and she is truly someone who I consider my online mentor. I did some research on the awesome peeps who run this ship, and when I found Brad, I knew we had to become business besties. Now, yay, he's here. (laughs) Okay, so not only did he previously work for one of my other favorite companies, SoulCycle, but I noticed he was the man behind the woman over at the Hollis Co., I would follow his LinkedIn post about the awesome things the Hollis Co. is doing. Um, And to be honest, I'm just so fascinated with you, Brad, as the person you are and the brands you represent. And I had to hear your story. So I know our audience also loves them some Rachel Hollis. And now they are going to love them some Brad Chandler. Brad, welcome to the Failed It Podcast. Thank you. So excited to be with you. Oh my God. I'm so, I, 
adore you. I just already, I, I can't wait for this interview. I've been so excited. Um, so normally we jump right into your failed it resume, but I think it's so important to expand beyond your bio a little. And I want you to tell us just super high level so our audience can get, get to know you a little bit here about what you were doing prior to the Hollis Co. And then how it got you here. So I alluded to it a little bit, but just give a super, super high level what you were doing prior to the Hollis Co. And then how you got there. Yeah. Um, my trajectory, of course, this is called, you know, the Failed Hit Podcast. So I've been thinking <laughs> about my life through a series of what I have not accomplished uh, the way I thought. Um, and so, you know, it, it started, of course, a long time ago. The major pivot that that broke me down to put me back to where I am right now, I think happened. I was a, a brand manager for an international company um, that was based in Hong Kong. And so I would go back and forth. I'd spend a couple of months over there and then go back to LA for a week and then go back to Hong Kong for a couple of months. And um, it finally got to the point where I was like, listen, just move me to China. I want to be here. I'm ready. And so as they were prepping for that, on my final visit back to LA, I started a relationship with someone. <laughs> I met someone. I was like, well, okay, this is great and all, but like, I, I'm busy. I've got some I'm going. And it was just, um, it didn't turn out that way. And I made the decision, well, I'm going to follow my heart on this and I'm going to turn down that job and just stay in LA and start this relationship. Um, and so with that person, then I suddenly was jobless. And so it was like, well, let's, um, let's start a business. Let's do something together. So um, he was in music. I'm, you know, a business person. So I was like, well, uh, let's do something in the, mus- in the music space in Hollywood. Now, this was in 2008, so if you can imagine the climate mm. then, business-wise, and the music industry, which is so up and down. But it was like, you know, we, we got this. We're going to give it a shot. So with no seed money, um, at the, the height of this recession, quote, depression, um, we built this business. And so for the next five or so years, super scrappy, created a hybrid company, artist development, recording. It became successful. And in that process, though, I also realized that this was not the relationship that was healthy for me. And so I finally, I put all my money into it. The business itself actually acted like a marriage because it wasn't, we couldn't have got marriage. And I say, thank God. Um, we, <laughs> but it acted as, a, as where I was putting all of my cash and keeping mm-hmm. all of our cash. And unfortunately, it became very, very ugly. Like in my mind, I thought, oh, we're two people that just, you know, we, we love each other and respect each other. At the end of the day, we can let's sell the company. Let's let's just figure a way to dismantle this and just move on. And it turned into all out war. Um, and it just became it was we were holding guns at each other's heads. And we either um, I either walked away and left everything or we completely destroyed each other. We'd walk away with probably half a million dollars in debt, each of us. And so I left, I walked away. And I think in that moment, I knew that I had, I had no other choice and there was something larger calling me. Um, and it was even a, like a, that's kind of Siddhartha moment that if you're familiar with Siddhartha, the Buddha, you know, he had to walk away from everything to become who he needed to be. And, and I just had to leave everything. And so I left everything, Mm. everything in a course of overnight, like this is a a long drawn out process, couple of months, but overnight I had nothing in my bank account. I had, there was just no income. I had left the house. I like just walked away. So I was sleeping in my car. I was sleeping on couches. (laughs) Like it was a desperate moment. Um, and oddly enough, one of my friends, um, or one of the people that had been working in the studio, who was still a friend, but I had been his employer, he was like, hey, I started at Soul Cycle. Why don't you um, try there? I can see if I can get you in. I was like, okay, great. So then he got me an interview and I started as a manager. And like, here I am, it was, I was at, there was 40. I was at 40 years old. My life had completely fallen apart. Yeah. I got a job as an assistant studio manager as quickly as I could. So I'm working with kids that are like in their 20s. So it was like the humble pie that I was just eating because I I just felt I had no other choice at that moment. There was things were moving too quickly and I was in a, a pitfall. And 
it's also that's when the demons open up. I think at 40 years old to be like, my life is a failure. I just didn't see a way out. Um, but I started at Soul Cycle, working with kids that I normally would be <laughs> their boss and um, cleaning tiles and like just just crazy, crazy things. And, I, you know, I just kept going. I just said, Brad, just put one foot in front of the other. Keep going, keep going. Um, and through that, of course, then, you know, I, I it did climb. And eventually um, that is where I met my current husband, Chris Chandler, uh, who was an instructor at Soul Cycle. So we met each other there. We moved to Austin. I opened that market. Then I, you know, I kept just stepping into, I did marketing for Texas for Soul Cycle, And through that process, Chris also got to know Rachel Hollis. And then as we all became friends and I just knew, great, Soul was the place that I was able to heal. It was the place that I was able to learn what it means to celebrate people on their journey. It was the place where I learned to have grace with myself the same way I would have grace for other people. Um, it was the place that I learned celebration and while it was the place where I could put myself back together, it essentially was not where I would be, was meant to be forever. And so learning again to pivot and just walk away um, is when I encountered with, with Rachel Hollis. And we began be in many conversations, just finding out what her visions were and what she wanted. And so it was a long conversation of talking and getting to know each other. And then I jumped on board Hollis Co., um, and now I work as an integrator with her. Oh, my God. Literally, I mean, that story gave me, I got all the feels, Brad. I, <laughs> I laughed at certain points. I cried. I had a tear in my retina. Um, this is amazing. I appreciate you sharing that story. And it kind of, through that, you did give us a little bit of your failure resume, if I'm if I'm being honest. I think that was just a great skim of both. And, I mean, what a lesson for everybody listening that, it was almost like, and forgive, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it almost as if when you left the LA business, you left your partner that that was your rock bottom and you had to like get out of that and figure out a way. And through Soul Cycle, you found who you were again. It was like a rebirth. And now you're with Rachel. And it's just because of those failures, you got to where you are in a nutshell. If I'm recapping that right, tell me if I'm wrong, but 100%. Yeah. Oh my God. So, okay. I want to talk about Rachel really quick and your relationship because yeah. I find it so interesting because before we talked about, um, before we, we hit record, you and I were chatting and I said, this is all about you, right? Because there's the integrator and there's usually an innovator with that mm -hmm. integrator, right? And um, I know that as an integrator, you are integrating ideas for other people. And this is obviously for Rachel Hollis, who is one of the most successful women I've ever had the privilege of watching. And to be honest, we're the same age. And sometimes I'm just like, oh, my God, she's, you know, she, I, I, I do the comparison thing. But at mm -hmm. the same time, I just find her an amazing human being. So what have you learned as an integrator? And then what have you taught her as an integrator? One of my strengths, and I think that's the thing that's most important about, I believe, being an integrator, especially, and it, here's the thing, the Rachel Hollis model is very unique because she is CEO and she's also a product and a brand herself. Mm -hmm. And so my, the strength that I believe I bring to the table in terms of integration is learning how to pivot constantly and learning how to feel what is needed when it's needed and then jumping in as necessary and also learning how to stand back as necessary. <laughs> yeah. Um, even when we, you know, integration before we went into quarantine is very different than integration in quarantine um, because she's flexing a different set of muscles as CEO. Now she's been very hands-on. So a CEO that's very hands-on for an integrator can be kind of weird and threatening, <laughs> but mm -hmm. at the same time, I've also learned how to pivot and step back and um it's a dance you know um yeah. and so i'm able now to provide structure and she'll just be like we need to get over there and so then i can build the strategy around that in a way that i wouldn't have necessarily done before so now i get to flex a different set of muscles um so i think this in the dance we learn from each other um, and let each other explore different sets of skills that we didn't I mean, we might have known, but we hadn't been expressing to each other before. So that's what's been neat about this quarantine moment. 
Um, and I think oh. that's the way we're essentially learning from each other. Cause I also do get to, to learn a bit. I get to before where I thought like, Oh, well, she's just a visionary and she has all the ideas. Oh no, this is also the moment where I get to like bring some big picture to the table in a way that she may also need it at the moment, which is helpful. Totally. Oh my God, Brad. Oh. Well, and so we've talked about this idea of integrators, innovators. There's, have you read the book Rocket Fuel? That's yes, where I'm exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So that we talked about that actually on an episode, um, episode four of this podcast. And so I will definitely link to that book in the show notes if anybody listening wants to know more about integrators and innovators. But it's so fascinating to me because you really need both. And I love what you said about the dance, right? Like it is mm-hmm. a dance and, um, Myself and my director of operations at Improve It, we read that book when we first started working together. And it's just it's just such an interesting thing. You can't have one without the other. And I think it's just so cool that you're also bringing some new ideas to the table because in this pivot, you have to, right? Like you have to bring new ideas because we've never been through this before. So I want to ask you specifically, how has Brad adjusted to this new normal? What have you done that you've had to adjust? This for me has felt like, and I actually see it in a lot of businesses, and I think this is happening across the board, but it's just for me as well. Um, There's a quote unquote, like there's a great excuse in quarantine, (laughs) you know, that we, their businesses are able to say like, we're pivoting in ways that we wish we could have in the past, but we didn't have a reason to, because you're worried about what what effects it's going to have. But now across the board, businesses, as well as people, and this is what I do in my feeling, is like, I I can just now lean into what I want to be doing on a daily basis without having to like, oh, I can't go there, I can't do this, find other reasons why I can't, could, like, I, I, there are no distractions. I get to just now lean into what's best for me, what works for me. Um, and that just feels really good. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, to make the pivots that I, there's, I just feel like we're all giving each other a lot of grace right now that, oh, you're putting out something crazy. You're, you're painting that, like no one's questioning why you're doing anything. It's like, yep, yeah. got it, get it. <laughs> so it's a great play area right now. I feel like. That is a beautiful answer. Oh, I love that. And it, and you're absolutely right. Like thinking about what you just said, there's a sense of freedom with this in a little bit. Like yeah. I think also to kind of tie into this podcast, like the reason this podcast has, exists truly is to really unveil that curtain to show that, you know, you see these great successes. In my mind, you are just crushing life, right? And to hear you share with us your story of literally how you got to where you are today is not something I think that people enjoy talking about. and. It's actually the things that happened in those moments is is where you've gotten to this point in your life where you're working with Rachel and you've, you know, climbed the ranks at Soul Cycle and you found truly it sounds yourself through all of this journey. So I want to ask you, going back to the story you told at the very beginning about the the breakup and you know, losing everything. What would you say were the three lessons you learned in those moments? The three main lessons that you learned. The first aha moment that I had is that um, nothing is more painful than your inner, inner demons are. <laughs> that mm. was like the Pandora's box that it, like I felt I knew myself until I lost everything. And then it was like the trap door opened and out came demons that I never thought I was holding inside that were just literally there to tear me apart. And that was probably the the worst piece of it because I didn't even know they were there and I didn't know, I didn't know how much I could hate myself or I think, I think so little of myself. So that was like the first big takeaway was like, oh, wow, there's a monster inside of you. <laughs> that like, oh. you know what I mean? And it's like, we all have it. We just, we we keep it down or we are able to like dance around it or do enough to appease it or feel accomplished enough that it doesn't rear its head. But, you know, and so when we do fail, failure is actually, it taught me what failure is that I wish in retrospect that I had been able to be like, Brad, you're okay you're breathing, you're eating, you have people around you that will feed you if you need, that will let you sleep on their couch, like we'll take it, you're, you are okay in this moment because the real torture was self-inflicted. Mm. Um, and that was the first 
thing that that I noticed. That's number one. That was a big takeaway. Um, two, uh, I would say that my life in general, especially my life, is not a straight line. And any idea that like, okay, this I'll do this project and it's going to get me here, or let's like plan. Uh, there's no mapping. There is no straight line. So don't even bother imagining how something is going to turn out. Just do it. Take the step. Take the next step. Um, life is a constant pivot. Take the next step and then look around and then take the next best step and then take the next best step. But this sort of like imagining how something is going to be if we do something else is a sort of madness um, that I took away because life can turn on a dime. Uh, and so it's not worth trying to imagine what will be or what you're going to get out of something in the future for me personally. Um, then the third thing kind of, I guess, would go along with that is just that uh, in any sort of discomfort, in any sort of failure, in any, when even when the bottom drops out, nothing is permanent. Everything is temporary. Everything is changing. Just hang on because as long as you're breathing, you will be okay. This will change. Um, and so it's allowed me to kind of sit in the discomfort a little bit more. Mm. You know, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. Of course it is. And it will not last forever because nothing lasts forever. Oh, Brad, yes. I, and that I think is something people, myself included, really need to hear right now. You know, going through quarantine, I think, there's this feeling because we don't really have an end in sight and no one has a crystal ball. And so just knowing that this is a season, it will pass and that you've had seasons prior to this that have passed and, you know, to find that sort of silver lining in it. I think it's really hard when you sit in it because a lot of times you can't see past what you're going through. But it, I always think when you come out the other side, there's always that sort of silver silver lining to what it is that really gave you those demons and those those things that you had to work through, you got through the other side and there was a rainbow on the other side of it, if you will. So I think it's just, it's really, those are awesome. I also love there is no straight line. I'm going to use that to you. I, I, I think that's absolutely beautiful because... I'm an improviser, right? And so <laughs> as improvisers, <laughs> all, about <pivot. laughs> all about that pivot. And even, you know, even in this time of quarantine and uncertainty, like we still get scared as well. But just knowing no straight line exists that we can zigzag and go left and right. Well, I, I, that's a really great lesson. And I know a lot of people are going to enjoy hearing that, myself included. Hi, friends. Are you working from home? Did I catch you in your car or on a run or even while getting ready? Which, if you're like me in the mornings, involves the business mullet, the work shirt and the front are on top, and sweatpants in the back or on the bottom. Now, are you craving more connection in your workday? Do you want a support group of professionals who want to learn, laugh, and be supported by positivity during this time? Well, I and our awesome cohort have your back with Improve It's WFH Workshop From Home membership. Now, don't just hear it from me. Here are some quotes from our founding members. Being a part of the WFH membership has been a breath of fresh air during this unexpected remote work situation. Improve It's WFH membership is so fun and engaging that it makes me forget I'm stepping outside of my comfort zone. I have been loving the WFH membership with Improve It. It has provided me with exactly the content I needed to help my team work remotely for the first time. Now, as a WFH member, you will receive one live interactive virtual workshop with your fellow community all about leading in a virtual environment and one live weekly interactive coaching session with yours truly that dives deeper into leading a remote workforce. That's one event per week, and I would love to see you there. Not to mention, you also get an awesome network of like-minded professionals who want to laugh and learn all month long. So join us. The last date to sign up for our July cohort is June 30th at 1159 p.m. And you can find that in our show notes. I cannot wait to laugh and learn alongside of you. You also said something about kind of leaning into that discomfort. 
So as you know, Improve It is a professional development company. We use improv comedy to train on soft skills. And one of our biggest mascots is a chicken hat, Brad. Okay. Now keep listening. Okay. (laughs) So (laughs) it's, um, we, in our in-person workshops, it's this hat. It has chicken legs. Every time you hear the word improv, we pass it to the person on the right. We Honestly, it sounds cheesy, but we do a chicken dance, the chicken dance you see at weddings. We do that. I'm not going to ask you to do that here, (laughs) but we use it as a way to break down barriers. And the very beginning of a workshop, it, it goes through the entire workshop with us. And it's sort of our calling card. But the reason it exists is just because it shows people very quickly how to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. So what, knowing all of that background, what would you say? in your life was your chicken champion moment. So what did you, what was the biggest thing that happened where you realized I'm going to lean into this discomfort? I'm going to become comfortable with the uncomfortable. What would you say was that, what that would be? Well, I guess there's two ways I can answer this question. One would be the very, like I also in this process, like learned Vipassana meditation, which I really believe in. Tell more about that, please. So into it. Great. Okay. So that, and that kind of leads into like what the top line of that is. Vipassana meditation is a process of sitting and observing the body. And when it's like, so it's not like chanting, you do nothing, you do nothing, but observe, you start with uh, like the observation of the sensation of your nose, and then it grows to full scanning, but it's a process just of observation sitting and observing the observation and the, the sensations of the body with that process though your mind goes wild and also what it does is i learned that your body will actually invent pain to distract mm. you to stop stop oh don't okay let's stop okay let because it doesn't want you to just let it all unfold and so that process i mean you as you learn Vipassana meditations, when you go like on a full retreat, you can sit in meditation for up to 10 hours a day um, in installments, but um, strong determination says you're going to sit for this session. It's like an hour. You just don't move. You're not going to move your body. You're not itching. You're not moving. You're not adjusting. You're not doing anything. And so your body will probably flare up because it has a story it wants to tell you that is real, that it's trying to get you to reinvest in. So that process of sitting, like I have experienced some of the most intense pain that simply wasn't real. And so to just sit in it and say, oh, I see you. I see you. Okay. Interesting. Tell me more. Interesting. And that it was, it's so hard <laughs> because it's, yeah. it teaches you like what, what is pain really? And what is destruction? And that I think goes, even goes back to this demon and this idea of failure was the idea for me of like, my chicken champion moment, I guess that leaning into it is like, no, lean into the fact of art. I know everything feels out of control and it feels so painful and it feels so upside down and you are upset. And in this moment, are you okay? In this moment, do you have a roof over your head? Do you have money in the bank account? Do you, what do you have right now? Like are in literally in this moment, are you okay? Because the answer 99.9% of the time is yes then that's like to stay in that moment, even though everything else around you is tells you that it's upside down or you want to invest in the panic and you want to invest in the chaos and how th- everything is wrong to be able to say, oh yes, in this moment, I am okay, was probably the biggest game changer for me in, in moving forward. So that would be my chicken hat, <laughs> would just be like, yeah. no, 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 right now, I'm okay. <laughs> oh my God. God, I love it so much. And if you have, I'm going to ask you if you have any resource for anybody listening on how they could learn to do this type of meditation. So fascinated. Would would love that. Oh my gosh. It is the most, yeah, the most beautiful thing. Look for the the Vipassana Dhamma meditation, um, search that, but they have centers all over the world. It's totally free donation based. It is like a 10 day course. So it's a chunk of time, but it doesn't cost you anything. And I swear it will change your life. I wish I had done it at 18 to be able to actually see through the insanity um, and start dismantling it. But it it is a, a game changer. Okay. Done and done. And I, 
So many questions, Brad. So many questions <laughs> because I've I've dabbled in meditation myself, and I will tell you, it literally changed my life. It, yeah. it was the game changer um, for me. As I, I and I alluded to this to you earlier, and I know we talked a few minutes before the show, but I, you know, had some struggles ha- conceiving. I wanted to have a kid, and so mm. um, it took many years, and I through that process really learned mindfulness because I think before I you know, before having, I think it all, it goes back to your idea of this silver lining and there is no straight line that I wasn't going to be able to mother someone unless I was able to mother myself. So I had to go through that meditational journey to, and I still meditate every morning, if at a minimum five minutes, but yes. it truly does help. It's so, it's so beneficial. And I've never done that type of meditation. So I will definitely put some links to it in the show notes for people who are interested, and I'm going to look into it myself. So thank you, sir. Thank you. I love that. Well, I love talking to you. I have more questions. (laughs) So so question for you here. So as you know, we're an improv-based, well, we're a professional development company, but we use improv. And one of the biggest lessons in improv is that there are no mistakes on stage. There are only gifts. So that's how we view fails as as a gift, right? So that is something that moves scenes forward. That is how we as improvisers just live our lives. There are no mistakes, only gifts. So what would you say are your three action items for others to improve themselves based on learning from your gifts? So if somebody here is listening today and they hear the story, maybe they are in that place that you were many years ago when you were 40. I don't know many years ago. I just made that up. You were very young. So I don't know how many years ago that was, but maybe they're in that place and they need some action items to take. What would you tell them to do? I think, especially as you know, with comedy, since there are no no's, a no just implies that there's another opportunity. You got to turn somewhere, right? You can't say no. You got to just find the and. Um, yep. The same is there's nothing, there, have no fear and pivot. And we're especially seeing it right now, just where we are in the company. And I'm just seeing it across the board on social media. People that are crushing it right now are the ones that are like, oh, this is a pivot, pivot, just pivot. Like, it, yep. oh, we weren't doing this way before, but what are we doing now? What are we doing now? That there's nothing wrong with the hard pivot. It's exciting because that keeps you, it's it's in the moment and it's just, you've taken the next best step, but it doesn't mean that the next best step is one that you've already done in the same direction. It might be a different direction and that's totally okay. Look for the pivot. It's almost like healthy to pivot. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Because it means you're aware. And that's like the rut of comedy is if like you aren't really paying attention to your surroundings and you just plow through, that's bad comedy because you're not playing with anybody else. Good comedy is when you're aware of like, oh, I think they just implied that and I can pivot into it. I can pivot into it. Um, and that's where I think our, we're going to see some amazing companies coming out of this time period that are like, really taking advantage of the moment because if you can do it here you can freaking thrive when this is done um and so pivot's not a bad word pivot's a great word it doesn't mean that it came out of challenge or something went wrong you're taking advantage of the moment i love it that's the first answer okay wait before you go to number two and three we have to talk about something you have a very strong knowledge, my friend, of comedy. Are you an improviser by chance? Well, I mean, so here, like, even another failure, if we go back to my failure resume, <laughs> um, like, I totally grew up in the theater and went, like, I, you know, it's funny, Rachel Hollis and I actually went to the same acting school, um, different Stop. times, but same acting school, at different times, of course, because I'm older than she is. But yeah, we went to the same acting school. And that was even a big failure moment for me too, is learning like what the inner saboteur can do to you because it just, it got to a point where I didn't have a handle on that. I wasn't in therapy as I should have been. Like I didn't yeah. realize how I was like dismantling myself. Um, so yeah, so I've been through all the, and then that's my past life, which hopefully we'll get back into at some point. Stop, Brad. <laughs> okay. I had to digress for a moment because honestly, that made my life and I did not know that. And that is that was not on either resume. So this no, is a fact yeah. that we just pulled out that I'm really enjoying. Okay, back to the back to the action item. So what yeah. would you say the other two action items would be for somebody who is really wanting to improve themselves based on learning from your gifts? I think number two would kind of also go along with the pivot, the idea that 
And this was the lesson for me that sometimes in order to get like that best, your actual best version of your life, which you might not be able to see, the hard part is letting go of the life, you know, and that also comes with the pivot. It might like the the hard part of the pivot is to stop doing something that you were doing before. Um, And especially if you're making a big life change, it's not like, oh, I'm going to change my life and this is going to be so great and so easy because it's better. No, 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 no. It will be terrifying. It will be hard. (laughs) It means you are going to be letting go of things because if you aren't letting go of something, then it means you're just staying stuck anyways. And that's freaking scary. And I think even personal change, that's the hard part. Yes, it seems like, oh, I'm going to start a habit and it's going to make me better and it will make you better. And it's going to be freaking hard to do because it means you have to stop being who you were. (laughs) And that's scary. It's scarier to step into someone you don't know than it is just to hold on to who you think you are, even if it's not the best version of yourself. So uh, like uh, that to me is just be willing to be uncomfortable as you step into the new Um and just trust that pivot and, and trust that next step. I love it. I love it. Do you have a third? Yeah. And the th- I mean, the third is like a relationship one. This, for some reason, this was a big aha moment for me. Um, as I got older and I went into relationships that I had a pattern of like, oh, I like you. You like me. I guess we're in a relationship. <laughs> and it took a big aha moment for me to be like, oh, no, no. I I like you. I, I even love you and you love me. And that's fantastic. And we're not meant to be partners. Like that doesn't, one doesn't mean the other. Like there is a great amount of choice in the life that you want. And also the people that you surround yourself with and like who you choose to link arms with um, just because you have like an admiration for someone. And this is probably even with business too. And this take, took me a long time to get on board with Rachel because I needed to make sure that like, we were walking in the same direction because you can really love someone and decide that it's not for you, that this isn't the match. Um, And that was a really empowering moment for me because it gave me choice in where I put my energy, where I put my heart and now even where I put my career. Oh my God. I love it. And you know what you're doing in that, Brad, you're yes. And yourself. Yes, yes. And, and that's now, right. Yes. that's right. Oh my God. So many fun things that I'm learning today. So <laughs> those three answers are beautiful. And I think anybody who is listening, who is really, you know, kind of wondering, where do I go? Where where do I go from here? Those are three really great action items. And we're going to have all those listed in the show notes as well. So Brad, those were great answers. Thank you for that. And I want to ask you a couple more cues here. Okay. So great. after we talked about all of these different gifts. We're going to call them not failures, all these different gifts. The name of our company is improve it, but we always say you have to fail in order to improve that. It is really whatever your, it is, whatever it means to you. So what is your, it or your life's purpose? What would you say your, it is? Yeah, and you know, this is the one I've been working on at therapy lately. <laughs> <'Cause it laughs> like, I go, I'm like, like this, this like larger calling, what is it? How do I find it? I feel like, like in my mid 40s, I should have this thing. And she's like, calm down. You know what it is. You know, like, and so I think uh, the what I'm giving myself grace in, because grace is just having grace is a, a large piece of my life right now. And just in general, in, in retrospect and with other people, is that the it that I've been looking for is I just want to find avenues to look as many people in the eyes and just to say, you know, you're not alone, right? Ugh. Because I just think we all get trapped and I've been there, you know what I mean? Like having gone through what I've gone through for feeling so alone for so long in something is just, I, it is uncomfortable. That connection with someone is uncomfortable. And so it all, it also allows me to be in that moment of being willing to connect with someone in a way that may feel foreign to just say, Hey, you're not alone. We're not alone. You know, um, it somehow it just, it's helpful for my soul. <laughs> yeah. They were all individuals. Yes. We have our own individual nature, but at the same time, the idea that we're all going through something different it, uh, is not, it's not true. And I think that's the worst kind of pain we can feel is the idea of being separate from other people. 
Um, and so the more I can do and the projects, like that's a lot of what we do at Hollis and that's what Soul Cycle is about. And I think my it is being associated with companies and being in projects and creating projects that will put me in a space of building things either for other people or for myself that I can sit with other people and say, you're not alone. That is the best answer I've ever heard to that question. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. I am not just saying that. I'm not blowing smoke up the hoop. Aww. I am being honest. And honestly, that is the point of this podcast. So I hope someone here today listening, hears your story and you've achieved part of your life's purpose by Aww. this going to air. So that is beautiful. And I want to kind of relate that to what the world is going through right now. I think... Individually, we have all gone through really hard things in our lives. And sometimes you can feel alone in those individual things. And I've, I've been there too. I completely hear you. I, I speak up because I want other people to not feel alone either. But as a, as a global pandemic and as people go through this experience together in quarantine and with the coronavirus, um, it's just so important to have people like yourself share their story. So even in this, even though we all know we're going through this together, there could be other hurt and other pain as we all are suffering through this pandemic. So I just think it's so wonderful that you came on today to share your journey with others. And I hope that that you reach as many possible or many people as possible with your it. I just think that is the best it I've ever heard. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, even to that point about this pandemic, which I think is like the most magical thing. And I, you know, I pray that we'll never see this situation again, but we never have in the, in the history of time. I truly believe this is the moment where globally we are in the same context. Yeah. Like when again will this happen where like you will not have another conversation with anyone on this planet that doesn't understand what it means like to be in a pandemic like right. because and we haven't been connected like this before either where all of our stories are connected social media is connected we are like telling the same context and that's freaking spectacular to me i agree and we got to learn from this right there's yeah. something there I, I saw some amazing quote the other day that said um we can't go back to the new normal there was a reason that this pause exists let's if we if we go back to the new normal we wouldn't have learned the lesson so yeah. I totally agree with that. And uh, I love that answer so much. So I got a couple more cues and then I got a fun surprise for you. So Uh what would you're like, oh God, Um, what, but you're an improviser, Brad, you got this. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So what would you do if you knew you could not fail? You know, thinking about that question, especially in the context of failure, I I almost want to like rephrase that question because I think about like what I would do if I couldn't feel like that. I mean, I can go to my cupboard and pull out a piece of bread and eat it because I know I'm not going to fail doing that. And so it's like the idea of doing something without the risk of failure is almost boring. You know what I mean? Like who's really drawn to that? And I feel like the question that I grapple with is like, what am I going to try to do even though I'll probably fail? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like I have dreams that I want to do. Like, to to give you an example, like, I have this vision that I'm trying to work out of how to make it happen properly of doing a dairy cow rescue. Um, Just because that's like the soft spot in my heart of dairy cows, for whatever reason. Love it. But that's a whole different podcast. Um, (laughs) And so, like, I know how to make it happen. I can do it. But it's almost like the easy way of doing it is not exciting to me. It's no, no, no. Let's let's do it in a way that might be different. How can I do this differently? That maybe it's a little more risky, but it's more sustainable. But it, you know, it, it, if there's no risk, then it doesn't allow for a questioning of how could I do this differently. Um, and that's the important piece to me. Um, and that's why I actually value a bit of risk because it's going to keep you on your toes and it's going to make you think about it differently and not be complacent. Because if then you're gonna say like, what would I just do if I wasn't gonna fail? I mean, it would be sloppy and it would be boring and be like, great, I'm gonna start a dairy cow rescue. Okay, well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, this is gonna be, I'm gonna start a dairy cow rescue, and you know what I mean? And it's figuring out these extra twists that will be something like, oh, yeah, why didn't we think of that? Um, mm. And so that's it's the risk of failure that actually makes things exciting for me. 
And that is why you are an integrator and an amazing <laughs> human being. Right. <laughs> I, I no, truly, I always say no risk, no champagne. And I truly believe that. I, I yeah. do. And I, I think to do what you're doing, to do the path that you have chosen to walk, you've had to be able to be excited about risk. There's risk in every t- yeah. every time you're like, I'm going to go to this company that because you were at SoulCycle in the very beginning, right? Or, or were, were they already around? Uh, they were already around, yeah. Um, but they just started in LA. So we're just starting right. up in LA, yeah. But so you've just, you've gravitated towards these positive companies, but within that, you've grown within them and you're helping them yeah. take risks as well, which yeah. is so exciting. So, okay, let me ask you this. And then yeah. here it comes the special round. So what did you fail at today? Like, and we are recording this at 1130 <laughs> in the morning on a Wednesday. What did you fail at so far today? Well, I failed the schedule correctly because we had a meeting that I think would take us last as long and I'm fully stacked. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be late. Um, but yeah, aside from that, like I think I, I just wanted to wake up earlier, but we've been recording so much content for the app that we were that we're launching soon and it's been a crazy couple of days. So, you know, it's just like, yes, tons of failures and I just have to give myself grace because I can't control everything. That's right. So that's where I failed. <laughs> well, and I'm so excited for that app. I want you to definitely tell people about that um, in just a moment before we get there, though. This yeah. is the round you have been waiting for, Brad. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> this is called Fail Yeah. Uh-huh. It's a little cheesy there, but that's right. what it's called. Um, and it's a lightning round. So there's a little bit of improv, some thinking quickly on your feet. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and I want you to just respond as fast as you can with only one word answers. Oh, gosh. So, okay. But know that you can't fail, okay? <laughs> Even though this is a fail, fail the podcast. So, but if you do say more than one word, I'm going to go, fail, yeah. Oh, okay? okay. Okay. So it's okay. just really scary. And I know this is a huge risk. So, this. um, no, you can do it. So I'm going to come pretty fast. Great. Are you ready for the fail, yeah, round, Brad? No and yes. Go for it. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. One word to describe your early career. Oh, lost. Lost. Okay, I'll give you that. There was an O, but I'm going to give you that. Okay, one word. <laughs> one word. It was a birthing sound. It was a birthing sound. <laughs> okay, one word to describe where you're currently at in your career. Strategy. Oh, one word to describe your future self. Authentic. Oh. One word to describe your favorite boss. Authentic. Oh, one word to describe your least favorite boss. Mm, Shifty. One word to describe your leadership style. Clarity. One word to describe the Hollis Co. Juggernaut. One word to describe Brad Chandler. Friend. Oh, and one word to describe this interview. Sunshine. uh... Oh, you nailed it. You didn't (laughs) fail it. I'm giving you a round of applause. Oh, my God. So amazing, Brad. You are sunshine. I, I have... I see you on social media. I follow the Hollis Co. I see you. I see Brad and the Divas. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that, that is something. If you don't know, you have to go to the Hollis Co.'s Instagram page <laughs> or see them at a Rise conference. Um, so, Brad, tell everybody where they can find you, your social platforms, and anything you want people to know about. Yeah, probably just like uh, the Brad Chandler is a great place on Instagram. That's like the main hub. Um, yeah, and everything else kind of spins out from there. And just keep a lookout for for Rachel Hollis and the Hollis Company and all the stuff that we're moving into. Things are going to be shifting and growing and changing. Um, and yeah, get our app. It's going to be super. And you'll probably see me sweating in crazy outfits. We did a, <laughs> a, I did a 30-minute rave workout. I, I mean, it's... In a mesh tank. And I mean, it's really over the top and super fantastic. <laughs> okay, this is in the app because I'm immediately yeah. doing that. Okay. 
Thank you for that. (laughs) So I want to say a big thank you to everybody for listening. So take a screenshot of you listening to this episode and tag us on Instagram at learn to improve it or improve it on Facebook using, using, there it is, the word, using the hashtag failed it podcast. I just want to thank you so much, Brad, for being here. Honestly, this made my day, my week, and you are a real dream of an interview. And I feel so honored to have had you on this show. So thank you so much. Thank you. This is a joy. Loved it. You are amazing. All right. Until next time, you guys. See you soon. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to Failed It. I'm so happy you're along for the ride. And if you enjoyed today's show, head on over to iTunes to rate and subscribe so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every Wednesday. I'll see you next week, but want to leave you with this thought. What will you fail at today? And how will that help your future successful self? Think about it. I'm proud of you and you are totally failing it. See you next time.